Hello, 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 ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the City Skylines Submitted City Traffic Fix and City Fix video. This is part two, or an epilogue, for a city fix and traffic fix that I did. So we are back in the city of Lake Valley, created by Daedalus. And so in part one, uh, I did a lot of updates to the traffic, and the traffic was fixed, got up to 80% with no despawning. I made a lot of uh, financial updates, and so the city's finances improved and was turning a profit, though kind of small. And then I also showed a lot of layout updates. So it was a huge update and fix for the city, and I wanted to use the city as a guide, a tutorial, and walkthrough to help uh, not only Daedalus with his city, but uh, anybody else that wants to start a city or work on their city or fix problems in their city. And so where I left part one is I mentioned that all of these items are fixed and so now the city just has to run. Uh, meaning just play the city, let it run, uh, let the changes and the new layout take hold and the city will be in uh, good shape. And so I wanted to do this video to show what the city actually looks like after you let it run for a while. So I have let it run for a little bit. The population had dropped from about 45,000 to, I think it was like 33,000 or something like that because of the updated zoning. So with uh, letting the city run, the population has exploded. It's now up to 51,000. So that's a very good sign, good, healthy growth. And the other big change you can see right next to it. Uh, when I first started to work on the city, it had, uh, I think, negative 90,000 profitability or lack of profitability, negative 90,000 a week. So the city was pretty much bankrupt. Um, and then with the changes that I made and when I finished part one, it, it would get to like 5,000 profitability, but then with the layout changes, it went negative again. Um, and I mentioned that you just let it run and it'll turn positive. Uh, because the traffic is good, uh, the financial stuff is fine, just the city needs to grow a little bit. And uh, that is exactly what happened. The city is so profitable. It is booming and making so much money. It's making a hundred and almost 13,000 a week. In fact, I actually don't think I've ever seen a number that high before for a city of this size. So I actually think that this is now the most profitable city that I have worked on. I, I've, I've done a lot of uh, city fixes, um, so uh, you know, don't hold me to that, but I, I don't really recall a city being that profitable. So I'm really proud of the changes, and so I wanted to summarize a little bit. I didn't really make a lot of changes while I was letting it run, but I did some fine tuning, so I wanted to uh, go over that. So let's, uh, oh, by the way, um, right? No despawning. And look at this. The traffic flow is up to 83%. And that's with uh, uh, more population than when I first started the city, uh, which was around 45,000. So let me zoom in. And uh, what you'll notice is the areas that I updated the zoning for, you can see that they've started to fill in. Right, I updated the zoning here. That started to fill in. Um, and then I created this new industrial section right here. Uh, that started to uh, fill in. In fact, the industry and commercial stuff is pretty much full. Um, so the city is growing. The updated zoning is starting to fill in. Um, one of the uh, items that I did work on is I created some more of this the low density residential, basically where the homes are. So I, I just created a few more spots, created a few more spots, just just expanded some of the spots. And then I put in some residential up here. And I think the, the office and some of this commercial is also new. So I, I just uh, updated a little bit of the zoning there. Nothing significant. Uh, this industrial area industry creates a lot of traffic. So I created another intersection off the highway for it. So again, minor updates. The other thing is, if you recall, there were a boatload of one-way roads. Like these roads were all headed south, one-way south, 
one way south. Um, they weren't going north. So I've now updated the majority of them to be uh, uh, not two lanes south or two lane one way, but uh, a four lane two way roads. So I did that. So again, some minor stuff. And then one of the uh, things that I did in part one is I made a, a subway system and it actually ended up being a lot more successful than I anticipated. In fact, look at this. Uh, and uh, I'll mention one thing. This was got up to um, 2,500 with the line that I initially created. And I noticed that there were so many people waiting in that line. There still are 1,300 that I expanded the number of vehicles and it still wasn't enough. <laughs> it's actually maxed out unless I actually go in here and do the budget. So, um, so I expanded uh, the amount of vehicles on that line, uh, on uh, line one and line two, which is actually the same uh, loop. And so that was a much bigger success than I anticipated. And so what I did is I built a second line right here, starts right here, comes down to the airport, and heads over and terminates over into this industrial area. The sole industrial, industrial area when I first started the city here on the south side. And then I created another small one right here. And that goes just to this new industrial area up there. So very small. Those don't have as much uh, ridership. Um, I mean, this one does 493. This one really doesn't. Yeah. It, I mean, not a lot of people are going to use it because the amount, th th this is very small. But uh, I started it because it sets the stage for expansion. Right? There's this area right here. And so as that builds out, uh, you know, another you know, one or two stops can be created. And then down here, um, as this area kind of builds out, you can have another spot right here. So I just kind of set it up for the future. Yeah, and in fact, I would say building this out uh, as there's demand and then uh, creating a, a, a loop right here would be useful. Uh, you can even take this one and create um, one or two spots here bring it out here one or two spots one or two spots and then bring it back you could do that there's obviously a lot of flexibility i just made some fine tuning uh, or some updates to the subway system some uh updates to the roads again the road stuff was pretty minor a little bit of update to the zoning but primarily just letting it run and then the other thing that i did is on the policies i i uh citywide uh, there weren't any um, as I left part one, but what I did do, oh, uh, sorry, there was encouraged biking uh, citywide uh, 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 as I finished part one. But what I did do is I turned on the small business enthusiast and the big business benefactor citywide. So that that's, that's pretty much it. And I let the city run. And so you can see, again, population is doing great and the profitability is really the highlight here's the traffic let me hit play so you can see it go you can see that the areas that were red um i mean there's there's some coloration oh my gosh we're at 84 percent there's some like right here but there's no gridlock there's no uh, where traffic is backed up for an extended period of time. A little bit at this intersection with the industry, a little bit right here, but it's not really bad at all. So this is just excellent, excellent. So really happy about that. And one of the reasons why is, of course, yes, we did a lot of traffic fixes and um, that I outlined in the summary uh, and what I did in part one. Um, but uh, some of it is really the layout. Some of it is really the layout. Last two things that I wanted to mention is, uh, if you recall, I, I, I said that, hey, if you got a city that's, you know, pretty much bankrupt, where it's got, in this case, now negative 23 million, uh, that you can turn on unlimited money, work on the city, try to get it profitable, and as you let it run, it will account for the profitability in the background. 
and eventually you can switch it back to limited money. And so you can see that it went from negative 25 million to negative 23. And, and that was in the background when I had unlimited money turned on. I switched it to limited money uh, to illustrate that point, to show that, hey, you can see that it is counting down. So, you know, put the game on fast, let it run for a while, and it will eventually turn a profit and you can just play permanently on limited money. Um, I think, as I mentioned in part one, um, or as I was doing in part one, I think it's better to have uh, unlimited money turned on. That way you can still build stuff and still make modifications as the city is growing. Um, and, and, and then uh, hopefully those updates can help the city be even more profitable and work this number down even faster. Otherwise, if you play it like this, as I illustrated before, or as I showed before, you can't build anything. Um, so uh, so I, I think it's better to play with the unlimited money when you're in a situation like this with a city that's unfortunately has got an extremely large debt uh, or negative balance uh, where you can't do anything, or, or I shouldn't say that, uh, where you can't really build anything. Uh, so I think it's better to play with unlimited money so you can still uh, make building updates and road updates, things like that. Um, while you're uh, trying to heal the city and improve the city. The last thing I wanted to mention is, I wanted to kind of zoom in here so you can kind of see the traffic in this new area. Um, the last thing I wanted to mention is, um, one of the things I'm, I, I said in part one is that, hey, you know, when, when the city is uh, bankrupt, the game ends. And I apologize, that is incorrect. And so one of the viewers of the video uh, actually uh, provided clarification on that and uh, it turns out that when you have a city that has a negative balance city skylines will actually let you just continue to play that indefinitely uh, so you, the city will still run um, as I mentioned y you just can't build anything so uh, can you update the zoning yeah that doesn't cost any money can you update the uh, tax rates, can you update the budget? Absolutely, so you can do those kinds of things. So you can still play the game, you can still let the city run, so it doesn't necessarily end, but you are highly limited in what you can do. So if your city doesn't have a large balance, I would say, uh, I'm sorry, if it doesn't have a large negative balance, doesn't have a large negative balance, and if you have the possibility of turning it pro uh, profitable, uh, making the uh, weekly budget positive by, without having to build anything, maybe you know some tax updates, uh, budget updates, zoning updates, uh, then you, you, don't, you don't have to um, switch to unlimited money and the game won't end on you. So uh, you can continue to play indefinitely if you want to with the negative balance. Um, I, I think that if you have, uh, as I did with this city, if you have a severe negative balance and uh, extremely bad financial situation where you have to build and make a lot of updates to the city, then you know you want to turn on the unlimited money and start to make the updates there. Otherwise, uh, you're limited in, in the fixes that you can do. So, uh, so I wanted to provide that clarification. Do know that when your city is kind of going bankrupt, it will offer you a bailout. Um, however, if you accept the bailout, achievements are disabled. So uh, I, I would recommend not accepting the bailout. Instead, again, either go into the unlimited money mode, repair the city that way, or if your uh, lack of profitability is manageable, or the debt is manageable where you can f uh, fix it through non-building means, do that route, don't accept the bailout uh, so your achievements don't get turned off. Uh, okay, I think that's good. I think that uh, covers um, the status of this city. Uh, and so moving forward, uh, what I would suggest is putting this into unlimited money mode, again, letting it just continue to run, and then working on this side. Some of these roads, it, it, uh, it would be good to fine tune this area a little bit. There's a cargo train terminal. It'd be good to move that over here so you have more 
direct uh, highway access, putting in a queue, and then uh, this area has some natural uh, farming, uh, not farming, excuse me, a forestry. So uh, putting in a small amount of forestry industry, then a small amount of generic industry, and then again, same kind of uh, layout that I described before, a little bit of commercial, a little bit of office, residences, and so it'll be good to build this up. So that would be the next stage, I, and you can't do that in limited money mode. You'd have to go into unlimited money to do that, and the population should continue to rise. The profitability should continue to increase. Uh, there is a lot of demand for commercial and, and industrial. There's no demand for residential. That's okay. You know, you can start to build out the industry and commercial over here. Um, that will improve the profitability of the city. And then eventually as these residential areas get filled up, then uh, they, can, they can start to use, uh, uh, yeah, this area can be zoned with some more residential. Uh, I think that is good. Let's see where we're at. 81%. Oh, did it switch? 80. That's fine. Again, no despawning. Uh, population is in great shape. Uh, it's a little bit of a downturn right here, but I'm not too worried about that. You know, it should continue to uh, grow over time. And then uh, this number just continues to go down at a super fast pace. Uh, super fast pace. <laughs> All right. Um, I hope this helps all you mayors out there, you city skylines mayors. Definitely, if you like the video, please smash that like button. And if you don't like it, you can hit the dislike button. And if you would like to support me more, please subscribe. I do live stream. Schedule is in the description below. Uh, stop by. Say hello. All right. Thank you for uh, watching. Take care of yourselves. Bye-bye.